new crop of moms who are apparently allergic to color? So-called beige moms are obsessed with maintaining a neutral monochromatic aesthetic throughout their homes. Going so far as to only purchase beige colored clothing for their kids, decorating their homes with an all neutral beige inspired aesthetic, and spray painting their kids toys beige so that their toys don't disrupt with the neutral aesthetic of their homes. Hello, it's me, a sad beige mom, and I'm back with part two of my step two roller coaster makeover. I'm continuing my quest to turn the world of childhood wonder into a grayscale adventure. So strap in for another episode of the Chromatic Chronicles, where the only spectrum we're interested in is the soothing palette of beige. Armed with my trusty can of beige spray paint, today I'm giving a second coat and assembling this beige masterpiece. As I spray away, I can't help but reflect on the tranquil transformation unfolding before me. The twists and turns of the roller coaster are now embracing a muted elegance. It's not just about neutralizing the colors, it's about crafting a vibe that says, easy does it. With each sweep of the spray can, I can feel a sense of accomplishment. The vibrant reds and blues are fading into the background, making way for a harmonious blend of beige bliss. Because after all, beige is best. Now the assembly begins. It's not just about paint, it's about bringing together elements of simplicity and peace. I fit the beige pieces together like a puzzle, creating a masterpiece that whispers life doesn't have to be loud. So fellow enthusiasts of the beige aesthetic, stay tuned for part three of my exciting journey to drain the rainbow. As I continue this adventure, I'm contemplating adding a Cricut sticker to the mix for that extra touch. Any ideas on what it should say? Drop your recommendations below and join me in part three as I unveil the transformed look to my sad beige baby. Okay. This trend is yet another example of the obsession with aesthetic culture, but it's even more troubling because it's being imposed on children. For beige moms, everything has to be Instagrammable or TikTok ready. But this trend detracts from the vibrant colors that are usually associated with childhood and is perpetuating this very unrealistic standard of a carefully curated appearance. This is a perfect example of how TikTok culture translates into real lives and how the mommy influencer industrial complex <laughs> <laughs> I just created that. I don't know if that's a thing, but it's a thing now. The impact of the mommy influencer industrial complex and their preoccupation with aesthetics. It's gotten to a point now where it's become so cartoonish that it doesn't even feel real. It feels more like an SNL segment than real life. And it's even weirder than you think. The beige mom is a mom who has neutral colored clothing and a pristine home and a baby on her arm clad with a neutral palette to match. Haley DeRoche, a writer and librarian, went viral coining the term sad beige, referring to how the lack of color evokes feelings of sadness and lifelessness. According to Haley, sad beige is when your aesthetic is marketed in such a way that it views childhood as a somber experience and dressing your child this way or creating this environment will create a calm environment full of little scholars who want nothing more than to just like listen to Mozart quietly in their beige room and play quietly with their one wooden toy. The virality of the sad beige mom trend reached new heights with a TikTok video featuring a mom spray painting her child's toy Christmas tree with muted neutral beige colors. Go ahead and call me crazy or a sad beige mom for what I'm about to do. Today I'm giving the step two my first Christmas tree a total makeover. I'm leaning into my inner Pinterest mom with the vision to neutralize the tree and I can already hear you thinking that I'm gonna ruin my toddler's Christmas by painting over these colors. Let's be real, my toddler's favorite toys are brown cardboard boxes and clear plastic water bottles, so I really think that she's a neutral girly at heart. After taking a good long look at the tree, I headed over to Lowe's where I picked out all of our spray paint colors. I can list them all below if you guys would If like. you're crazy like me and end up doing this DIY, make sure to get the kind that specifically says that bonds to plastic. Once I decided which colors of spray paint to use on each part, it was go time. I originally wanted to paint the body of the tree a brown, but then I realized, you know what, I want my tree to look a little bit alive. So here I am painting an already green tree another shade of green. It gave it a very realistic Christmas tree look, which I love. The gold was way less gold than what I was thinking for the star, but I actually kind of dig the brass antique look. For the tree skirt, I used this satin color Rust-Oleum paint. When it was time to paint the ornaments, I just took some painter's tape and I covered the little ornament hooks with those. I wanted to 
to keep those white. Here is a little pro tip that I learned, or basically a rookie mistake that I made. And honestly, I'm so silly I didn't do this in the first place, but you'll definitely want to hang up the ornaments in order to spray paint them, not leaving them laying on the cardboard, getting super goopy in the paint. After a few hours when the paint dried, I was able to go in with a coat on the back side of the trees, and all that was left to do is to let it sit and dry overnight. Thankfully, there was only a little bit of peeling on one of my trees that I could easily fix, but it was almost time for the moment of truth and to see how it all looked together. Here's how the DIY ornaments turned out, guys. Honestly, I love them. They're definitely giving organic modern vibes. I might even go back in to add some little velvet ribbon bows along the hooks. I absolutely love it, but let me know what you think. This video garnered widespread attention and it really called into question the extent in which parents are willing to go, even at the expense of their own children's colorful experiences. I just saw this, mom. You know that like little tykes, fake plastic Christmas tree that kids can decorate as they please? Um, it's like close to a hundred bucks if I remember correctly. I looked into it whenever my kids were little. I just saw this girl on TikTok spray paint the entire thing to match her beige mom aesthetic. I just find that so sad. Like, don't get me wrong, I love like grays and neutrals as much as the next person, but my daughter's bedroom is bright pink. My son's bedroom is bright blue and has Mario characters all over it. Our toys are all colorful. It's important for their development. I just, I can't get on trend. I can't get on board with the whole beige mom trend and everything having to be neutral and boring. Like how absolutely devastating for your kids. Grow up, let them be kids. You can have your own boring ass personality, but leave your kids out of it. I hate moms who make their kids adhere to their aesthetic. Okay. And what I mean by that is wrapping their kids gifts in all moody, neutral wrapping paper, making sure that they don't have any colored toys in the house because it disrupts the like yeah, that's horrible. vibe of the living room. It makes me literally sick to my stomach when I see a kid who's not allowed to wear like my little pony on their shirt because Absolutely. it's like it's not like what are I you couldn't doing agree more. I couldn't agree more it makes me so upset like imagine could you imagine like think about how exciting color was to you as a kid like how fun it was to walk into a classroom and like everything's so bright and colorful and mm -hmm. stuff could you imagine like how you would feel as a child walking around and everything and you just, just have like nude, nude velvet ball yeah yeah that is horrible terrible. and all because your mom wants to post you on her instagram what stage of capitalism are we in right now that people have commodified a damn color like how are you obsessed with beige because of tiktok and it's especially concerning when you think about the idea of mom spray painting their children's toys when kids often put toys in their mouths that can't possibly be safe what I find so interesting and sad about this trend of people spray painting their children's toys, Fifty Shades of Beige, is that we are literally spray painting with toxic paint over perfectly serviceable toys for the illusion of wealth. That's my theory anyway. I think it's fairly well established that the look people are going for with this aesthetic is that of wealthy people. It has trickled down from the upper echelons down to us, the normies. Obviously it's from the Kardashians, but it's also from places like the Row. We also associate those aesthetic colors and like those muted tones with eco-friendly products. But like <laughs> now we're painting over perfectly fine toys that have gone through some like rigorous testing if they're coming out of like big brands, you know, like Little Tykes, Fisher Price, all of that stuff. We're painting over these perfectly fine things that have been through rigorous testing and we're painting over them with toxic paint and not always sealing it so that we can look rich and eco-friendly. <laughs> we will literally, <laughs> we will literally cover our children's toys with toxic paint to look eco-friendly. <laughs> what are we doing? And the answer is we're doing it for the gram. We're doing it for what we look like. It doesn't matter what the actual physical thing is anymore as long as it looks good on the little tiny screen that you're holding in your hand. Personally, I'm not a safety expert here at all, um, but personally, I wouldn't be coating my children's toys in toxic materials if they were going to put them in their mouths, which children absolutely do, even if you don't see it. They do. There's a lot of stuff your children do that you don't see. This trend was of course largely influenced by Kim Kardashian because somehow almost every toxic trend on the internet that's targeted at women somehow has a Kim Kardashian connection somewhere in there. She flaunted her white and beige Christmas decor. I'll show you the hallway. All these pretty custom trees. 
we did for our Christmas Eve party last year. And still the tree gets me every time it's so pretty. I love these. They're so whimsical, like Whoville, but all white. And she even launched a series of sandy monochromatic ensembles for her Skims shapewear line, launched a nude beige aesthetic of her skincare line, and collaborated with Beats to launch a beige-themed headphone collection. Never seen any tech products, especially headphones, be in neutral colors. I found an artist that would paint the headphones and then I thought, okay, well, why wouldn't I just go directly to Beats and show them some of the samples that I was just for fun creating. Now, mind you, beige headphones are nothing new, but I guess to sell people a product, you have to pretend like you did it first. As the sad beige moms trend continued to gain popularity, stores like HomeGoods and Amazon and Target started catching on to it, releasing a surge of beige colored merchandise to capitalize off of the trend. Listen, I. I personally love neutral colors. I do have my pops of color as you can see behind me, but we have neutral colors going on as well. But it's one thing for me as an adult, but it's another thing entirely to be imposing this on children and spray painting their toys and not even giving them the joy of color in their childhood. That is weird. And these beige moms are even going as far as to complain that their friends and family and their spouses bought them a colorful item. Like how dare they purchase colorful toys and clothes for my child, they're ruining my aesthetic. And now I want to sit back and relax and enjoy my evening. When all of a sudden I hear this agitating, grating voice. I remember even for me, I had a Disney princess themed room. Of course, now in my big age, I look back at that and I'm like cringe, but that was a symbol of my youth. Young people, especially children, need vibrancy, need color in their lives. Buying your kid wooden toys and spray painting their existing toys is just a new extreme. And painting their rooms all beige, it's over the top. Seems to me like the solution would be to like not showcase your kids' rooms would be to like not showcase your children on camera. Instead of trying to adapt your children to the aesthetic that you're trying to project online, perhaps you do not allow your child to be projected online. What a novel idea. Kids are meant to be messy as we discussed in our last video about Sephora kids, right? From when they have dirty diapers and when they're spitting up on you, when they're literally taking their crayons and scribbling in every color. That's what childhood is all about. It's to be able to treat the world as your canvas. All all the colors that you like. Kids are not supposed to be Instagram models. They're not supposed to be supporting actors. They're not supposed to be supporting actresses in the movie of your life. If that's the career that the mom chooses to have, that's one thing, but like for the kid to have that, for the kid to have to sacrifice their childhood to help their mom's aesthetic to grow is just, it's problematic. As Eva Wiseman puts it in The Guardian, by micromanaging the appearance of your homes and families, buying this sad beige illusion of class or taste, you sacrifice chaos. You sacrifice the kind of wildness and carelessness that in childhood is fleeting and sometimes gorgeous. And psychology today also says it's harmful for children's development to be deprived of colors. And they say, colors have meanings because of the way Way our brains are trained in early development. From fire trucks to stop signs, the color red, for example, is often associated with danger and threat. So by having a wide array of colors, kids learn to associate their emotions with color. By depriving your child of that, you're depriving your child of developing. And aesthetic culture, of course, is not just limited to moms. Last year alone, we saw a litany of trends go viral on TikTok. From Barbie core, to quiet luxury, to mermaid core, to the clean girl aesthetic, to the vanilla girl aesthetic. There's no denying that social media has ushered in this current era where people are obsessing over having this picture perfect aesthetic. An obsession with curating a character. People aren't living their lives anymore. They're acting. Forget Margot Robbie. Some of y'all deserve an Academy Award for the level of commitment that y'all put in to living in a world of make-believe for other people's consumption. 
And the sad beige mom trend goes beyond just saying, this is my individual choice. There's also a sense of moral posturing and classism that of course comes with beige moms as well. There's a parallel between this beige moms trend and the quiet luxury trend that gained popularity last year. This idea that colorful and more animated clothing is loud and gaudy compared to neutral toned items. Many beige moms are bashing bright color toys, saying that they cause overstimulation and saying that the beige aesthetic is the best option for children. And not to mention a lot of the products that go viral in the beige mom circles are very expensive. Like this $75 children's overalls, which were originally $125 by the way, that are described as being made in Portugal with fabric originally crafted for sailors on the Scottish seas. Like quiet luxury, most of the women who are the faces of this beige moms trend are thin white upper class women. The underlying message of this sad beige moms trend is this commitment to maintain the moral merit that we attached to the commitment to maintain. It is not easy to color coordinate every single item in your house and make sure that it matches this very specific aesthetic. It takes work. It's the idea that you're working hard to build and curate something. As writer Stephanie McNeil puts it in Buzzfeed, the dirty little secret beneath a perfect beige life is the dedication to maintain. The perfectly clear skin of a vanilla girl requires adherence to a skincare routine, access to a dermatologist, and the ease of a low stress life. White sheets have to be long and bleached regularly to maintain their sparkle. Cream rugs are extremely hard to keep pristine unless you can hire a specialist to clean them. A beige baby requires a beige nursery, so you need enough money to curate all the furniture to match. You can't just accept old pieces from friends or buy whatever works from the Facebook marketplace. To be beigeified is to have the money, the stability, and the security to care for everything in your life with the utmost grace from your sheets to your skin. We have to look beyond the surface level. These trends don't just come out of nowhere. There are sociological, and psychological factors at play here that make the beige mom aesthetic so alluring to so many women. It's an extension of wealth aesthetics. You don't need those colorful, gaudy items in your house. Those are for the peasants, darling. Us rich girls, we like class. We like elegance. We cannot overstimulate our precious children. <laughs> So it's this idea that we attach moral virtue to items that we purchase, that you had the discipline to hike out to William Sonoma, to build the perfectly curated home. It's this ethos of hard work, discipline, and personal achievement that's become intertwined with moral virtue. This pursuit of wealth, both in terms of monetary capital and social standing, is elevated to this pedestal of moral superiority because you have these items. Having an all neutral aesthetic isn't just about personal choice for beige moms. It's about doing what's best for your child. And this is why I say it's being treated as a moral imperative. More and more, we're seeing these trends that amount to not letting children be children. We're seeing these trends where adults impose their lifestyles onto children instead of letting children just have a space to explore and just this culture of social media that these children are growing up in. Kids should not be having to sacrifice their vibrant, colorful childhoods in order to be characters in momfluencer content. That's ridiculous. We should not be limiting our children's sensory experiences because it's gonna mess up our aesthetic. But I'd love to hear from you all in the comments down below. What are your thoughts on this beige moms trend? Do you have beige moms in your family or your friends? But if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you really liked it and you want more content like this, definitely don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button. What are you waiting for? And I'll talk to you all next time.